I know as wrestling fans, it's almost sacrilegious to say it because everybody loves the wrestling. But the truth of the matter is, is not everybody needs to be a wrestler. It's that simple. And especially in today's WWE, since so many people, whether they're 160 or 360 pounds, kind of almost look the same, act the same, present themselves the same, work the same, have the same movesets, nobody really stands out. So it's the people that are the on-screen personalities, such as the authority figures, such as the managers, the valets, uh, the escorts type of deal. Those are the ones that have the greatest chance to get over, especially as newer characters. And this is the way it's been for years, because you're naturally different compared to almost everybody else. Sometimes it doesn't work, but a lot of times it does. And in particular, when it comes to the women in WWE, we've gotten into this really geeky place in recent years, and we've lost some of the manliness about the business in the sense of now we treat the women as equals in terms of in-ring competitors, and we value them so much in terms of what they could do, how they look doesn't matter, their personalities don't matter, and all this other dumb shit. And all the while, what happens is you do have some talented women that don't get over nearly as much as they could because they kind of blend into the crowd with everybody else. Meanwhile, when you look throughout the history of the WWE, some of the biggest female stars the company has ever had either got their start first as a non-wrestler or, frankly, never really were wrestlers at all. You know, people in different categories such as China, Sable, Trish Stratus, Stacey Keebler, Tori Wilson, Vicky Guerrero. Laugh and mock me if you want, but China got over first and foremost because this was a big beefy bitch that was the bodyguard for DX. Sable didn't get over by wrestling Mark Merrill. Sable got over because she had black handprints on her fake tits. Trish Stratus, who became one of the truly great female talents in the history of the wrestling business, still ultimately was massively over because of her blonde hair, her big boobies, and her bubblicious butt that you just wanted to take a bite out of. And if you're a guy, you wanted to put 10 babies in and ruin that fucking career. And if you were a woman, you thought about maybe taking a swing at her. Isn't that right, Lillian Garcia? But nonetheless, you look at Vicky Guerrero. Would you rather be somebody like a Vicky Guerrero or would you rather have been somebody like an AJ Lee or a Paige? Long term, I would rather have been a Vicky Guerrero because to me there was a longer shelf life, more flexibility in terms of what you could do with her. And she was able to get massively over without having to go take a bunch of bumps. And frankly, the one way when AJ Lee really, really got over was not as an in-ring competitor. It was when they were doing that dumb, crazy bitch crap. When CM Punk and Daniel Bryan are fighting over her, and then she's the freaking Raw general manager skipping and all this other crap. That's what got her over, not wrestling in the ring. So I look at somebody like Lana, and I see somebody who's able to do something that not a lot of people can really truly do in today's WWE for a variety of factors, lack of talent, piss poor writing, terrible booking, uh, poor production, everything kind of going together, she was able to get over and get over big, whether the company wanted her to or not, to the point where Rusev was just kind of a tag along. Now, maybe you didn't want that long term, but the fact of the matter is the bitch got over. So you would think you would want to ride that as long as you possibly could, and you would want to emphasize that as long as you possibly could. But it's so often the case with WWE, they want to take people out of their strength, out of their core competency, and try to expand their horizons and try to ultimately build them into in-ring competitors. I get the concept in the sense of there's more potential payoff to the heat and to the blow-off if they're actually an in-ring competitor. But again, not everybody needs to be a wrestler. And if Lana was massively over, and she was massively over, as a valet for Rusev, as Rusev's heater, why the hell would you take away from that when you didn't need to? Because if you aligned her with Rusev, kept her aligned with Rusev, and they eventually turned face, then they're going to be even more over as baby faces because Lana is associated with Rusev. It just makes no sense. So to sit there and take somebody from a main roster standpoint who has zero ring experience and thrust her right into the SmackDown Women's Championship scene absolutely made no fucking sense to me. I didn't see what the point was. I didn't see why they were throwing her into the spot, and I didn't really see where the end game was. And to me, when it comes to booking or writing or whatever, whatever you want to call it, when you look at the two components in terms of the talents, 
you have one of three possible outcomes in my opinion. You get one of them over, you get both of them over, or you get nobody over. It's cool if you get one person over. What's really great, what makes a feud special, if both people are better off for it, if both people get more over because of it. Even if the one person ultimately goes over, if you get both of them over, man, you've really done something special. But it's so often the case with WWE, as we know, in recent years, nobody gets over. And that's the problem. And now you look at what they've done with Lana and sending her at Naomi not once, not twice, but three times and having her lose in a quicker fashion each of the three times. This is not anything that's designed to help Lana get more over. All this is going to do is kill her momentum and kill any heat she had remaining. And if that was WWE's goal, why would you do that? How petty are we? Are we still pissed that she's married to Rusev or whatever? Are we pissed about this? Are we pissed about the fact that she got over in a valet role? I don't know. I don't care. Get fucking over yourselves. If we're sitting there saying that, well, we want to eventually get her into being an in-ring competitor and we feel like there's more mileage to her long term, how the fuck is jobbing her out three straight times to the champ Furthermore, jobbing her out in even quicker and quicker fashion just to make her look completely incompetent, completely over her head. How in the hell is that designed to get her over? And if you say anything about anything involving Tamina in a storyline, truly, when the fuck has Tamina ever gotten herself over? When have they ever truly gotten her over? So now you're going to associate Lana with that shit? So in no way, shape, or form does this get Lana over. And then from Naomi's standpoint... You're the SmackDown Women's Champion. Your number one competition right now is somebody who's never wrestled a match on a Raw or a SmackDown that I can recall. And now you're getting three straight title shots against her where you just beat her quicker and quicker each time. That's not getting her more over as a babyface. That's not making people feel the glow more. That shit's stupid. And as a result, instead of trying to build some credibility in Naomi and making her more viable and legitimate as a champion that might potentially help people feel the glow more and get her more over, the WWE does the dumb dick booking that they always seem to love to do, and they manage to sabotage their babyface women's champion. So, as typical for WWE, instead of getting one of them over more, or hopefully, God forbid, both of them over more, we get nobody over. And what I really don't understand is why this company went down this direction with Lana to the point where it looks like they're trying to bury her. You cannot tell me based off of what happened between Money in the Bank and then the last two SmackDowns where she's faced Naomi and she's lost in quicker fashion each time that in any way, shape, or form that is designed to do anything like getting her over, making her more popular, making her more hated. None of that. I don't get it. You have so few people that can actually get over, whether by design or not. And she could actually legitimately really get over. And the way she packages and carries and presents herself is refreshing and different. Why would you want to bury this bitch? You're paying her money. Why would you not want to get the most possible out of her? Even if that requires you building her up a little bit, so that way you ultimately put somebody else over and hopefully you help get them over. You call that the breakfast club effect where you'll build up somebody just enough into a monster so that way Cena looks stronger when he smashes him. It's the old Randy Orton philosophy of, if I'm not winning, then I ain't doing shit for this dude, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be lazy, I'm going to sloth through it, but man, if I'm going over at the end of the day, I'm going to do everything I can to make this person look like a million bucks. You know, breakfast club business, if you will. But with Lana, there is no end game here. There was no purpose here. There was no real justifiable reason to do the dumb shit that they did. You take her away from Rusev, because Rusev's out a little bit, but now Rusev's back. Now, of course, you've sent Rusev right back at John Cena because let's replay two to three-year-old angles again because that's going to work awesome. So that way we have Lana sitting here, jobbing out quicker and quicker each time and making her look like a complete joke. At this point in time, why would anybody take her seriously as an in-ring competitor. So now not only have you undercut any at least immediate short-term to mid-term possibility of her being a viable singles competitor on SmackDown, you've now made her less consequential 
as a mouthpiece for a Rusev or anybody else because people are going to think about how quickly she was jobbed out here. Why would I take her that seriously over here? Why would you want to bury somebody like this? That's to me clearly what this is. Again, if you're jealous about the fact that she's sleeping with Rusev, get the fuck over it. Because frankly, a lot of you in WWE at the higher levels don't like women any fucking way. So what the hell does it matter to you? On top of that, why do you intentionally go out there and sabotage people that get over or have a chance to get over or frankly just intentionally sabotage people that you're paying a salary to? If you don't like them, if you don't want them, then fucking get rid of them. Why would you ruin them? Both for their own perspectives and their own purposes, but yours too. Why, WWE? Why would you bury Lana like this? To align her with somebody who's never fucking gotten over really themselves and Tamina? Is this Road Dogg's idea? Is this Triple H's idea? Is this Shane's idea? Who's booking this shit? I'm going to take one of the most over acts that I have and try to make her like everybody else. And then on top of that, make her look more pathetic than anybody else. Does that make any fucking sense to anybody whatsoever? I didn't think so. Maybe in the grand scheme of things, it's not a big deal. And if it's not, fine. But to me, it's representative of a ridiculous mindset that the WWE has. That everybody's got to be a wrestler. If people get over, but we don't really want them to get over, and we especially don't want them to get over a certain way, we are going to do everything we can to undercut them, to sabotage them, just to fucking play games with people. You have a 70-plus-year-old CEO of the company, other executives in the company in their 60s, and they still get their rocks off all these years later, fucking with people's careers, their livelihoods. Why? Why, WWE? Why would you bury Lana like this? Look at her and look at most of the rest of your women's roster. When you think about who has the potential to make the most money for you long term, do you look at Lana or do you look at Becky Lynch and say that's the horse we're going to tie our fucking wagon to? And if you're frankly going to tell me somebody like a Becky Lynch, but not just to pick on Becky Lynch because there are others, then what the fuck? Is going on and if you're gonna tell me well we didn't want to have a second strong heel woman because we have Carmella doing her thing then that just again speaks to the ridiculousness of this company what's wrong with having two strong powerful heels on the women's side you don't have that much of a roster any fucking ways so what the hell is it gonna hurt you might oh my god get two compelling storylines on Smackdown for the women who the fuck would want that right I just don't get it. This company is so stupid. They do everything they can they, to spite themselves. They do everything they can to undercut their talent, to sabotage people for kicks, for jollies, for stupidity, I don't know. But one more time, I asked the question, WWE, why? Why are you burying Lana? It's stupid and counterproductive. Cut it the fuck out.